I am um, Reverend Gareth Morley and I'm from All Saints Church in High Wycombe and it is an absolute pleasure and a joy to be with you all this evening. And thank you to uh, Mrs. Cromie and Mr. Bell for inviting me to be with you here today. It's a shame that due to the coronavirus restrictions we can't hold uh, this service in the church, uh, but we do extend a very warm invitation for you to come back next year uh, to be with us once again in the building. I want to, as we begin, to take just a, a minute or two of your time to share two truths with you. The first truth is that over 2,000 years ago, a man was born. His name was Jesus. He lived in Nazareth, and he preached a message of peace. Historians all agree that the historical figure, the man, the person, Jesus, did actually exist. This is not in dispute. And I double-checked with Alexa earlier, and she said it's true, so it must be. <laughs> the question, the difference comes as to what Jesus means to you. Are you indifferent to him? Do you view him as some great moral teacher? Do you believe, as my brothers and sisters uh, of the Islamic faith believe, that he's a great prophet? Or as Christians do, do you believe that he was the son of God? I'm not going to get you to answer that question now, so don't worry. Regardless of your view, I want to tell you the second truth. If ever you feel small and insignificant, especially when faced with the challenges of our world, such as the coronavirus, or the challenges we're going to meet in the coming decades with things such as climate change, poverty, world hunger, etc. Know this, and historians all agree on this, that Jesus changed the world. One person standing up, preaching a message of peace in a brutal world, changed it forever. I mean, here we are, if you wanted proof, 2,000 years later doing a carol service to remember his birthday, the day he was born. So whether you're indifferent to Jesus, whether you view him as a moral teacher, a great prophet, or whether you believe he really was the Son of God, know that one person makes all the difference. One person can change the world. So as we begin our service, let us pray. O oh God, you are the source of life and peace. We know it is you who turns our minds to thoughts of peace. We give thanks for the life of Jesus and his message of peace, joy, hope, and love. This Christmas, may those who are estranged join hands in friendship, and may nations seek the way of peace together. And may you empower all people to live in your law of love. Amen.
Genesis chapter 3, verses 8 to 15. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman who you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit from the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent tricked me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you among all animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head, and you will strike his heel. Yeah. 
Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2 and verses 6 to 7. The people who have walked in darkness have seen great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness. From this time onward and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 to 9. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see, or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor, and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea.
chapter 60, verses 1 to 6 and verse 19. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together, they come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant, and your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you, the wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah, all those of Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense, and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord." The sun shall no longer be your light by day, nor for the brightness shall the moon give light to you by night. But the Lord will be your everlasting light, and your God will be your glory.
Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favoured one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now, your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her, who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her.
Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. The shepherds go to the manger. Luke chapter 2, verses 8 to 20. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. 
Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around, shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace amongst those who he favours. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went in haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all those words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they have heard and seen, as it had been told them.
Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least amongst the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, 
Go and search diligently for the child, and when you've found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out. And there, ahead of them, went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not comprehend it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness, to bear witness of the light that all through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born 
not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth.
So as our, thank you, as our service, as our time draws to a close, a very well done to absolutely everybody. That was fantastic. Thank you very much. And in case I don't see you between now and the 25th, Merry Christmas to each and every one of you. Uh, and a final blessing as we now uh, come to our end. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen.